Hi everyone, just wanted to um, do a video today. I was going to go out for a really nice walk today, but the weather is a bit... Uh, and uh, and I've got some of the things I need to do around the house anyway, so I thought, well, I'll make a cup of tea. And uh, I want to talk to you about the CW project, which um, I've been building over the last few weeks, and the steps which I've gone through. A number of weeks ago, I came across a video on YouTube by Bud Churchwood, who had created a project uh, that used his Arduino, to decode CW straight from his radio, off air. And uh, I looked at this and I was fascinated by how he managed to accomplish this. So I thought, well, you know what, let's have a go and let's have a go and see if I could do it myself. And indeed I did. Um, I went through all Bud's videos. They're very, very clever, very informative, and Bud is very contactable with information. But one of the things I couldn't find out was how he had created the electronics. Um, so I did some Googling, did some looking around, and I came across the circuit which would transform uh, an audio signal into a digital signal that the Arduino could understand. And I found that online as a zero beat uh, decoder. Uh, it's a simple circuit, takes an audio input, and switches on an LED. Simple as that. And that is the basis of the project which I've created. Um, let me show you exactly what I have created and uh, you can be the judge to see whether it's any good or not. So the project I came across came from a QST article based back in 1990s, and it was a simple zero beat decoder, and it used an LM567. It's a very simple chip, it's a tone decoder, and you can configure the chip to decode any tone that uh, you can hear. Um, the circuit itself uses a variable resistor to swing or tune the circuit so that you can decide on your zero beat. Me personally, I use about 750 hertz. That's absolutely perfect for me. Um, I can hear it clearly and it seems to come out the radio very neatly as well. The first iteration of the circuit was the breadboard version and I laid it out on the breadboard that came with the Arduino kit that I purchased. And the first time I ran it, perfect success. I did make a small change to the actual circuit. Instead of using two 0.1 microfarads in parallel, I just used a, a 0.22 and it seems to work absolutely fine. There's no problems at all. Uh, I was surprised actually how well the circuit performed um, when I put it together. You'll see that uh, from the pictures that I've uh, shown you here, it's only got a two line display. Bud's sketch that he created uses a four line uh, display. So the first thing on my shopping list was a brand new display. From this version, I created the VeriBoard uh, layout. And the VeriBoard layout was very simple. It was very straightforward, almost exactly the same as what I created on the uh, circuit board. I just created it in such a way that I could plug it in uh, very easily onto the Arduino Uno. It literally plugs straight in on the top and uh, it was no problems at all. It worked, again, worked first time straight away. So uh, the next logical progression was for me to create a PCB. And I used the Fritzing software. And, uh, and within a week, I had three boards which I ordered and they came back and they were absolutely beautiful. And that's where the mistake came in. I noticed that I crowded the IC um, too much and I also didn't ground two capacitors. But that was easily rectifiable. The first thing of obviously, identifying that there was the fault. So the thing all works together. Again, I've made the board so it just plugs in straight on top of the, uh, the Arduino. And I used Bud Sketch straight out of the box. Um, I've made some alterations to it since I've uh, put it together, um, but that's because of what I plan to use this circuit for. So if you're wondering why I'm building this kit, well, it's a really straightforward solution, to be honest with you. I wanted to build a kit that um, I could use as a build-a-thon environment or a, um, or a learning aid for the youngsters. Um, I feel that this kit has got the perfect three combinations. It's got a bit of electronics. It's got um, some programming, although well, not a lot. Uh, but it also has a radio slant as well. And I think that's a perfect combination. It doesn't go into each field into greater depth. If you want to know more, 
it's the perfect avenue and it's the perfect vehicle, I feel, for, for learning more about um, any subject area. But it's enough to inspire and grab the attention of uh, some youngsters. Uh, so that's the reason why I've done this. The kit itself, um, if you look at the back of the, uh, the box, you'll notice it's got a line in, it's got a microphone a switch and a reset switch. You can use it straight off air. You can use it um, with anybody sending Morse tones from a computer speaker. And in fact, let me show you to um, let me show you the kit working, and let me show you two um, two methods in which I use it. First of all, you're going to hear it uh, decoding straight off the radio. Um, it's a bit slow, but that's the only signal I could find on the day. So have a look at this. This is the uh, actual kit decoding it live off air. Now, the second one you're going to hear is uh, Morse code transmitted from the PC speaker. Um, and it's using the microphone. It's using an Adafruit uh, microphone, mic amp. Uh, they're very, very cheap. They're about 99 pence um, that you can get hold of. And it's using that, um, the, the, the tones you can hear are being sent from the PC through the speakers, and it's using the microphone to decode it. Now, typically, I wouldn't expect it to be 100%. But what it does receive is pretty good. It makes a few mistakes, but I think it's very good. I'm also sending it quite quickly as well. It's sending it about 35 words per minute, I believe. So um, again, have a listen, have a look, and uh, see what you think. So conclusions, well, what have I learned? Um, after making the PCB, um, I discovered two faults. One, I didn't ground the capacitors. The other one was I was crowding the IC a bit too much. I've corrected those, but in learning about the PCB manufacturing process, how I'm gonna use the kit and um, the likelihood of it going forward, I've decided I'm gonna make a few more revisions and a few more changes. The first of all is all the connectors I'm gonna put down one side. Um, foolishly, I put them down the wrong side um, and it doesn't quite work. The other idea I had as well as I was going to have header pins all down the uh, PCB. But in the real world, there isn't enough space between the circuit board um, and the back of the display. So there's no space for the actual header pins themselves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reposition all of the pins down the other side of the board and bend them over at 90 degrees so you can have an edge connector uh, on the board. The other thing which I've, um, since making the board and making the kit, the other thing I'm going to include into the actual board itself is an oscillator, a very simple audio oscillator, and include a switch on the back of the box that you can switch between practice oscillator or on-air Morse. Um, using that switch will allow you to plug your key into the kit. You can tap out your Morse, you'll hear a tone from the oscillator, and then also the, um, the closing action of the uh, the key will also inject straight into the Arduino and you will get um, some sort of decoding of the, the letters that you're sending. So that's the conclusions I've got at the moment from the kit. Um, it's been a really excellent little build actually. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. And uh, the only thing it leaves me to say is a big thank you to Bud, who, whose, whose videos and whose uh, methods of uh, showing what he had done really inspired me. Uh, it's a fantastic channel that he has on YouTube. I wholeheartedly recommend you go and have a look at it. Subscribe to him. Uh, he's got a very calm and a very, uh, very methodical way of approaching um, a, a problem and uh, answering all questions. He's a lovely chap. I really recommend him. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to carry on with this project. So you'll probably see more tweets and more uh, blog posts and more um, of me chatting about this. So uh, don't be shy. Ask any questions you want. And, uh, and I hope it's been of use to you.